Yes, 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 lovely people. I hope you're well. Welcome back to another preview. UFC 287 is on the horizon. Miami, Florida, the 305. I'm joined by the man himself, the one and only Luke Tanner. Luke, the time of recording is not there yet, but we're almost there. So I'm going to say it. Happy birthday, bro. Thank you. Thank you. The first person to say it to me. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. It's only right, man. It's only right. So guys in the comment section, the first thing you need to do is put happy birthday. Spam the comment section. Happy birthday to Luke. Guess how old I am as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to say. Guess how old he is. Never know. The winner might get something. A little Release shout out. Might even get something. Might even get a little gift. Who knows? Who knows? Release it on the watch along on Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. you got to watch the watch along on Saturday. Um, how you doing, bro? Hey, I'm doing great. I'm doing great, especially with this card on the horizon. It's it, it's shaping up to be a great a, a great main card, a striker's dream. If if you love the striking, then this is the perfect card for you because this is predominantly strikers. Facts. Well, speaking of strikers, arguably the two best strikers in the UFC right now, Israel Adesanya. Looks to recapture gold against the man who he seems to not be able to get a victory over. Boatan, Alex Pereira. The boogeyman. Number two in the UFC, number four overall. The results are Izzy nil, Alex three as things stand. Now, context added, I do think Izzy got robbed in one of the results. Hmm. One, he got knocked out in, in kickboxing. And I still maintain the last time they they set foot in the octagon, I think it was an early stoppage. Even though Izzy's coaches think it was a correct stoppage, I think it was a slightly early stoppage, but I don't think it was a criminal stoppage. Mm. Luke, going into this fight for Izzy, can he finally get that win over Alex Pereira? It's such a difficult one because you can see it in mm. sports sometimes where just a team, a person you're up against, just has your number. Yeah. Like no matter what you do, and uh, unless Izzy's been in 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 Dagestan for the past seven months learning how to wrestle, then it's I, it's gonna be really really difficult. Unless he's gonna go out early to try and finish him, then I can see it going the same way as it did the uh, the first fight. And Izzy's looking good on the feet. He gets close. But the one thing that really hindered Izzy was him checking the leg kicks. Yeah. If you know and, delivering, like, and, and, and delivering leg kicks as well. And delivering leg kicks. Is as the fight got further along, just mm. the leg kicks from Pereira was were definitely affecting Izzy's movement. And he couldn't really move as well. I think he threw a leg kick and then Izzy went back and then he fell over and had to do the role he holy to pop back up so yeah. if i'm izzy i'm thinking i need to finish him within the first two or have to stay so switched on that he doesn't make a single mistake a single mistake a split second mistake again and we could possibly see him flat on his back out cold and here's the no, thing obviously. the pressure on izzy because of how good Pereira's striking is and how strong he is makes him such a difficult puzzle to solve because if, if I was to say to you right now, Luke, bro, you've got to throw through the rest of your day tomorrow and not make a single mistake. I'm talking about you've got to make sure you catch every bus you need to catch, any training you need to catch. You can't make any mistakes when you're at work. You can't make any mistakes when you get home. You'd be thinking to yourself, that's a lot of pressure. I'm a yeah. human being. But that's what we're asking Izzy to do if he's going to beat Pereira because Pereira has that equaliser. Not just that, we saw Pereira can take a punch and recover very quickly as well. The the punch that Izzy landed at the end of the first round was very similar and reminiscent to what he did to Robert Whitaker. Mm. Robert Whitaker didn't recover. Alex Pereira yeah. won the second round. I think it does make it easier though when this guy is, as Joe Rogan says, sanctioned cheating. Because this guy walks around at like 220, 226 yeah. See, pounds. I disagree was... with Joe there. I've got to be honest, I disagree. I think there's no rules there that say you can't weigh a certain amount. I know boxing do this rehydration rule, which again, I think is is silly as well. Mm. He's required 
to weigh 185 pounds for three seconds effectively. Mm. If he gets, if he weighs 290 pounds and he's able to get down and weigh that weight for th- weigh that weight for three seconds, mm. there's no cheating involved. He just is doing what he has to do to win. Like Rumble, remember when, when Rumble? Oh, Rumble at 170. God rest his soul. Yeah, like he did it. Like he was a big one guy at 170, but he managed to to cut it yeah. until he until he wasn't weight. able to. But that, that leads me on to the next point. I don't know if you did that on purpose, but it's a nice little segue. If Alex beats Izzy again, I know the clamour is going to be right. He's got to now go for the division like Izzy did. Robert Whitaker, Costa, potentially Hamza. Hmm. But is there another fight? A way up to avenge his mentor? His I mean, coach. we don't know any date on Yuri yet. Jamal Hill... Alex Pereira could be that. Could that be the fight? And here's where the killer is: Is he effectively cleared out the division for Pereira? <laughs> he also went up to 205, but wasn't able to win. Pereira could do what Izzy couldn't do and become a double champ if he ha- retains on Sunday hey, or Saturday. And we know that Pereira loves to troll Izzy. Could you imagine oh, if he goodness. retains and goes, "I'm going for that double champ status against"? A matchup which is probably favorable to him, yeah. Jamal is probably a striker and lifts up those two belts. Oh my god, goodness, the pettiness would be sensational. Not just that, if he wins against Izzy, he'll have eight wins and one loss. If he then goes straight up and and goes for the, the double champ status, he'll be doing that within 10 fights. And here's a killer. It, be it's amazing points. on his record. But without Izzy, Pereira would never have been able to do that. Because if Izzy didn't clear out that. 185, like, it's like he's made a pathway through. It's like Izzy literally said that, like, I've made a path for him. If we never yeah. had our history, he'd be at the bottom. He wouldn't even get here because he would have already been, not exposed, but I think someone with a with high-level wrestling would have taken advantage of the fact yeah. That he looks like a duck out of water when they're on the ground. Even in, in the Izzy fight, when yeah. Izzy took him down, you saw him and you're going, oh, you don't have a clue what you're doing down there. Like, you do not have a clue. And when, could you imagine at Robert Whittaker, Hamzat getting a hold of him down on the ground? Well, let me ask you, do you think he's been able to have made an improvement enough where Izzy can't hold him down? in the next fight, potentially, if Izzy were to get him down. Because, again, Izzy's ground game isn't brilliant either. I think we'll definitely see improvements because when you're working with with Glover, one of the best jiu-jitsu pra- practitioners in the game, yeah. then, of course, he's going to make improvements. But I don't know whether or not he's going to make... Glover's elite. top pressure was elite as well. Pardon? Glover to share his top pressure okay. when he was in his prime as elite as well. So, yeah, so yeah. it's cut you. I just don't know if not he's going to make that big of a step up with his rest, wrestling or mm. jiu-jitsu because he's not really going to need it as much. Because I think, as I said earlier, the likelihood of you seeing Izzy turn into prime Habib is zero. <laughs> yes. He's not doing it. So if I'm Glover, I'm thinking, uh, no, if I'm Glover trying to go through the game plan, we're going, we're going same again. Yeah. We're pretty much going same again. Maybe step on the gas a little bit earlier, so we we frighten Izzy to think, oh, he, oh, he might come to finish early, because yeah. that's the the fear for for Izzy is if if Pereira decides, no, 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 we're not waiting for the championship rounds. I'm coming for your head first round, which yeah. is definitely a possibility, especially the way that they're both talking about how they want the fight to go. They both want the big finish, no TKO. They want a flush. KO over one another. Here's the thing. I think the fact that Pereira saw in the last fight that he walked down Izzy in the fifth. Now, granted, Izzy was a bit compromised, but he was compromised because of Pereira. I want to make that clear. I think Pereira doesn't have as much respect now going forward for Izzy's power. And I think if if you can't, as a power puncher, if the person you're fighting you don't have respect for them as a as a power puncher or, or as a striker in terms of the damage they can cause. I I do worry. So on that basis, Luke, bro, I'm gonna have to push you for a prediction. 
Does Izzy finally avenge this or is it rinse and repeat for Pereira? Unfortunately for Israel, it's going to be rinse and repeat and it's going to be Alex Pereira. Knockout, third round. It's going to hit him flush with the left. That's going to be all she wrote. For your walk-off KO. So, yeah, again, no secrets. Everyone knows I'm a massive Izzy fan. Mm. Um, all you have to do is watch my reaction back when the fight got stopped um, the last time they fought. But I also do like Pereira as well. Um, but I think I've got to go Pereira. I think the fact that he just, he knows how to get it done against Izzy, it seems. And there's no shame in it. In like uh, there, There's none whatsoever. People will troll Izzy naturally because Izzy's outspoken, he's flamboyant and all those things. But look, Izzy... He goes down, in my opinion, to probably the second best middleweight of all time as things stand yeah. right now. Yeah, people aren't going to like that, but I think I think people assume that. Oh, he's been in boring fights. I mean, but he's also had corkers as well. So he, he's had corkers, and plus, when people say boring fights, it's boring to the casual. But well, it's, it's, and like it's also hardcore. boring because the person he's across the octagon from is not taking any risk because they know with the risk they take comes massive, massive punishment. Takes two to tango. Exactly. Exactly. So that's the first fight, the main event. On to the co-main event, pay-per-view star and Miami native George Masvidal going up against, let's be honest, kind of the unsung hero of the world weight division, Gilbert Burns. Pfft, tough arts for George. Usman twice, Colby. Not going up against a wrestler per se, but you ask Wonderboy Thompson and He'll tell you once Gilbert gets you down, it's bloody hard to get back up. Yeah. Is this a is this a is this the most difficult match stylistically for Masvidal in the division at the moment? It's the most horrible matchup. I don't know who he annoyed at the UFC headquarters. I thought his boys yeah. and Dana, but Dana's chucked them, chucked them a difficult one. But yeah. it's going to be really, really difficult for him because he is this is right or this is his last dance. If you want to have any shot of getting Gold. close to the title again. He needs to pull out a victory over Gilbert Burns. And I just I can't see it. I honestly I I cannot see it. Fighting in front of your home city does one or two things. It, it gives you the extra 10% or you get Derek Lewis. Yeah. I, I and and you just take L after L after L. And last time they fought in Miami Jorge Masvidal got KO'd, went, mm. went night, night for the first time in his career. And yeah. it's going to be interesting to see how he gets over from that, from his defeats. Because let's be honest, the game plan to beat him is, is pretty clear. If you can pin him down and keep him there, that drains his gas tank. Yeah, And from there, it's, it's pretty much all she wrote for him. Which, it is. which is a shame because he's had, like, I feel like that he had his Indian summer, Indian summer where he got the three wins in a row, got the BMF belt, which needs to be retired. You cannot be a BMF when you lost three in a row, you've been KO'd and you've been dominated twice. So That's here's not- the thing: I, <laughs> I think you can, I think you can have the BMF because the BMF's more than just your your skill level. It's it's, a, it's more of an attitude than a mindset. So I, I do think he can keep, but he's got to fight someone. Like, if you're going to have the BMF belt, you can't really walk around it, in my opinion, unless you're going to put it on the line against someone. If you're not yeah. doing that, then, yeah, I'd, I'd leave it alone. Yeah, I say, I say retire and do not promote him as the BMF yeah. champion, please. <laughs> so so here's one thing I want to say. Now, Gilbert is obviously a monster. He's, his grappling's brilliant. He's striking. He's, he hits hard as anything. Just arcs Usman, arcs Damian Meyer, arcs Hamzat Shemayev. We know how hard he hits. There's one thing we know about George, though. He has very good striking. I think people sleep on George's striking. Yeah. His punch selection's excellent. Arcs Daring Till. Nate Diaz, he pieced him up real bad. Mm. Like, could have stopped him a couple of times, potentially, if you put more pressure on. He does have a greater reach than Gilbert Burns. Yeah. Now, he might not be as quick as he used to, but we may be looking past what George can bring to this fight. And maybe, because Gil- Gilbert is a guy that kind of, like, obviously in a Wonderboy fight, he's st- stuck to a plan. But if you get That's Gilbert in a shootout, he can go off script and 
he can fall in love with the striking. If you do that with a Masvidal, you could get caught with something, though. Yes, yes. I, I can definitely see that. I think everyone was guilty of it when they even heard the rumours match up of Masvidal versus Burns. I think I was definitely one of them going, well, that's a nightmare because there's no way he's going to be able to survive the wrestling, survive the yeah. jiu-jitsu. But I think people have massively underrated his striking ability. And I feel like with Gilbert, he's going to have to jump into range yeah. to risk getting caught. And it's not like that Gilbert has been left flat on his back. Like, obviously, that's not happened at welterweight. He's not been KO'd at welterweight. Yeah, but when you look it? down at lightweight, he has been slept quite a few times. So there's no reason to say that it couldn't happen. It's just how much of a step has Masvidal lost? Like, yeah. How slow is he? Because if he's lost a lot... Yeah, then he's in trouble. Then it's going to look... It's like watching a footballer that you know has got the brains, but the body's just br not broken, but it's sort of the We know that as Liverpool fans right now. Oh, yeah, we know that. <laughs> a few of yeah, them. Yeah, we definitely know that. But that's the thing. If he can get himself up for this, because Masvidal said it, like, he might be done if he can't get yeah. the W, which I don't see happening because he's on such a big contract for the UFC. Yeah. That I just cannot imagine seeing him retiring. I can see him retiring from challenging for the belt. Doesn't mean he yeah. can't have barn burning fights. Yeah, I agree. Or well, legend fights, so so a to speak. Position. So, put you on the spot, bro. Is Burns going to play party spoiler in Miami, in Miami, or is Masvidal going to roll back the clock and call out Leon Edwards off the back of a win? Oh, I love a story. Uh, I do love a story. Uh, this is a tricky one. I'm going to go with my head and I'm going to go Gilbert Burns' submission. Because unlike Colby, Gilbert is aggressive on the yeah. ground and he yeah. will try to find the finish. So that's why I'm going to go submission for Gilbert Burns. I'm going to go TKO round two for Gilbert. But I'll be honest, and I love Gilbert. I, I, the guy's a warrior. He seems like a really good guy as well. Everyone, I've not heard anyone speak bad of him. I would love to see Masvidal win that fight and see Masvidal versus Edwards at the O2 when they return in July. That, for me, is the fight. And, and you know what? I know colby has been promised a title shot, this, that, and the other. Go and make that fight. If Masvidal wins, make that fight. If that happens, then I'm convinced the UFC watches our stuff. Because yes. <laughs> I am convinced. I hope so. I hope so. You guys, let us know in your in your opinions who's going to win the, the co-main event and the main event. Another fight I think has gone unnoticed on this card. Maybe not one for the casuals as such. Rob Font versus Adrian Yanez. Bro, for me, this is the fight I'm most looking forward to. Because Chef's Rob Font brings it. Rob Font brings it every time, but Yanez's stand-up and striking looks to be special. What are you saying for this one? This is probably the fight, just like you, that I'm most looking forward to because yeah. Adrian Yanez's last fight was against... Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to give him the shine because he's yeah, a yeah, that guy. right piece of work, but the yeah. way he pieced him up, KO'd him, Beautiful. And then the celebration afterwards, like the mockery of him yeah. was a chef's kiss. And he's been calling out for people in the top 15 and, and Rob Fonts answered the call to yeah. two uh, elite strikers in that division. Mm. And for me, might be fight of the night. This is my fight of the night, personally. This is the one that Dana's going to have to dig, in, dig into the checkbook. Try out the check because for me, this is a massive opportunity for Adrian Yanez to really catapult himself up. I think Rob Font's ranked around number nine. So if Rob I'm... Font is ranked number six. Oh, oh, damn, is he that high up? I thought he so went check it. If Yanez wins, he'll go into number six. Above him is Vera, Yan, Sanhagen, O'Malley, Devashvili, and obviously Sterling. Now, Sterling's already booked up with Cejudo. It looks like Devesh Vili and Sanhagen are going to fight. O'Malley looks to be sitting out until he gets a title shot. Yan and Vera look like they're going to get it on. 
You know what I'm going to say? If Yanez is able to do it, I wouldn't mind seeing him against Dominic Cruz. And the reason I say that, Dominic Cruz got star power name. Potentially. Apparently he turned down Umar as well, star. apparently. Apparently the he thing, turned down the thing Umar is, as well, which I don't blame him because he wants to get... Yeah, I mean, he could fight Umar, obviously, but I think a Dominic Cruz fight would be better for his profile if we're going down that route. Because if he wins, everyone above him is pretty much booked up. Yeah, I think I think for Rob Font, this is a massive opportunity for him to stop because he's on the two fight losing streak at yeah, the moment. He established himself um, because he in his last two fights, Rob Font has been absolutely pieced. Yeah, that Vera, that Vera fight was Vera, and then Jose Aldo crazy. did the same thing the fight before yeah. to him, which is crazy because before he went on the two fight losing streak, he beat Sergio Pettis. Yeah. Who is Bellator, Bellator champion. bantamweight champion? Yeah. Beat Ricky Simon. Yeah, who's, who's got a fight coming up soon and is, has looked really good. He obviously beat someone we're fond of in Jack Shaw. Knocked out Marlon Moraes, who just been knocked out by Brendan Loch, name of the PFL, yeah. and pieced up Cody Garbrandt. Yeah, he pieced, pieced up, up Cody. Him. Yeah, like sent him back to uh, sent him to flyweight. Yeah, pieced up. Yeah. Um, but obviously, before that, he 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 has lost to uh, at the time the top of the division, Pedro Munoz yeah. back in 2017, Rafael Sansao back when he was was up there in 2018. So he has lost to only the the best at, at the division. So yeah. for him, he's probably looking at it thinking, yeah, I can stop the skid. Pause. <laughs> yeah, pause. <laughs> But I did see a quote saying that that he wants to mix it up a little bit to show that he's not just a striker. And he yeah. says that he plans to submit Adrian Yanez. Interesting. As well. So I think this is I think this is going to be a potential star making performance for Adrian Yanez. I think this is going to be the one where people sit up and go, this kid's potentially special. I'm going to go first in this one. I'm going Adrian Yanez with a um a decision win. <sighs> I'm going unanimous three three rounds to nil as well. What are you saying? You, you took my prediction right out my. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know what, screw it. I'm I'm going to go Yana's second round KO, TKO. Okay. The reason I'm not saying knockout or anything, Rob Font is about as tough oh, yeah. as it gets. I saw him take some punches and kicks from Vera and just kept on going to the final final um, bell. So yeah, he's got a chin. You could something about the New England cartel, they've got chins, yeah, yeah, they definitely do. Oh, yeah, they've got chins, all right. Speaking of someone who is in a barn burner, Kevin Holland is up against Ponza Nibio. I mean, Kevin and and Jorge Masvidal have had their back and forth as well. Yeah, I mean, we'll speak about that more in a watch along because that, that's just crazy in itself that those two aren't focusing on their own fight and they're causing beef. Kevin Holland is making a bit of a reputation for himself with this stuff, to be fair. He's just beefing. Like, he's, he's having beefing fun. everyone. Um, I love I love Kevin Holland, though. He's so entertaining, so much fun to watch. Ponza Nibio, again, if he didn't go through his injuries, I think he would have been someone who could have been mixing it in title contention at one point. Off the back of that Stephen Wonderboy Thompson fight, where I actually think Holland could have won if he took it, if, if he wanted to actually win the fight and take I it know. as an MMA fight as opposed to being fan friendly. As a fan, we respect him for it, but as a coach, you probably think oh, it's so frustrating because you're pulling your hair out. Then what the f are you yeah, doing? It, if but he they takes, made the right decision. Takes, yeah, if he takes down Stephen Wonderboy Thompson that fight, I think he gets the win, but he didn't. Made it a fan friendly fight, which again I appreciate, but from a coach's standpoint, you're probably fur furious with him. Ponza Nibio, is this a good fight for him to come back? And do you think he can get the victory? Oh, I, th I think I think it's a great matchup because it's going to be predominantly striking. Um, that depends on if Kevin Holland turns up. If he wants to turn it into a fan friendly fight, or whether or not he wants to. Or whether or not he wants to take it seriously, because if he takes yeah. it as a fan, fan, fan friendly fight, I, th I can see Pons and Nevio getting the win. But if Ke Kevin Holland is focused, like he wants to get up the rankings in yeah. this division, which is the uh, there's definitely room for him to climb the rankings. Uh, yeah. there's, he probably won't be title level, 
yeah. But Agreed. there's definitely fights in the top in the top fifteen that are made for him because they're predominantly strikers. And I think Ponza Nibio is either ranked fifteenth or he's just ranked like outside the top fifteen. But but he's one of those fighters that are pushing for a top place in the top fifteen. So it's gonna be really interesting because. In Ponzinibbio's last fight, he fought, I think he fought Alex Morono. Yeah. Short, I think it was a short notice fight. Yeah. And he looked a bit sluggish and he yeah. was down on the scorecards. And he pulled off a great win. He just pulled off a KO just, just yeah. out of nowhere. Pulled off a KO out of nowhere. But the last two fights before that, lost to Michel Pereira, lost to Jeff, Jeff Neal, and he's also lost to the Leech. The one thing I will say, though, there's a Scott. massive reach advantage for Kevin Holland in this fight, and he's taller as well. I do think this, I think you're right. I think this fight depends on which Kevin shows up. If it's the Kevin who says, I want to climb the rankings and I'm I'm willing to sacrifice being fan friendly to do it, then I think he wins. If he throws caution to the wind, he could get caught with something. But yeah. I think being a younger, fresher fighter, I'm going Kevin Which Holland. Which is different. Ponson Nebo has yeah. gone. Gone through hell and back with, yeah, with injuries. The fact is that he's yeah. still doing it is it's more incredible. Credible. Yeah, I'm actually going to go over Kevin Holland um, TKO round two. I'm going to go Kevin Holland TKO finish round three. Fair dues, fair dues, and on to the final fight of the main card. If you haven't already, guys, please do smash the like button. Make sure you also head over to Luke's channel. Link is in the title. Go and subscribe there. Um, the sensation, the young sensation, Raul Rojas Jr. versus Christian Rodriguez. Don't know much about Christian Rodriguez, got to be honest. Know a hell of a lot about Raul Rojas Jr., though. Looks mm. like this kid's got the sky's the limit. And I know uh, Mokayev is chasing down that John Jones record. I've been quite vocal in saying it. I think the only person, as of right now, who can catch John Jones's record is Raul Rojas Jr., given his age and what he's already doing. Yeah, this kid... Is, is special. The real the sky deal, right? is the limit for mm. him. He's got a younger brother who does the same thing. Crazy. Apparently, he's just as good as him. Apparently, and he's fifteen as well. So, watch out for him in a few years' time. But for him, yeah, this is a massive opportunity um, to to be on the main card. I think he was on the prelims last time he fought when he made his UFC debut. But the fact is that he's opening. A pay-per-view, no bigger spot for me. Especially when you're on, on the card, you either want to be opening or, or you want to be closing out the event. And the fact yeah. is that he's opening. I think Christian Rodriguez is one-on-one -on -one in the UFC. Lost his UFC debut to Jonathan Pierce, But he won. But, and then he beat Joshua Wems by an anaconda choke um, in October last year. So this guy that is fighting has got... He's, he's got pedigree of, of, of submitting yeah. people. Um, he's definitely most of his, actually most of his wins, I think, are split down the middle between submissions and TKO. So Raul, Raul Rosses Jr. has got, it's not going to be a gimme. It's not a gimme yeah, fight. Yeah. It's, a step up in, it's a step up in opposition, which is needed for him at the moment. Because he's yeah. got time to break that record. Like he's yeah, literally yeah. got, he's like got four, five four, years. Yeah, four and a half, five years. So they can take the time yeah. with him, which is sort of rare because the UFC, the second there's any bit of fire behind you, the they rock is strapped on and and they've ruined careers when they have done that. Strap yeah. the rock on someone Sage when they're Northcutt, not ready. For example. Pardon? Sage Northcutt oh, comes to mind. He's a perfect example. Um, yeah. There's probably a couple of fighters in the UFC currently that they've strapped the rocket to too early and, and they're sort of floundering. One that sticks yeah. out to mind at the moment, it's going to sound harsh, but Macy Barber. <laughs> Yeah, is the one that sticks out in in uh, in my mind. Someone that wanted to be the youngest champion, and unfortunately, she's not going to do that. But yeah, but it is what it is. Are we both saying Raul Rojas Jr.? How are we saying he does it? I'm I'm going to say he'll. I think he'll do it by submission again. Um, I'm going to go second round submission. I'm going round one. I think he puts on the show. I think he hunts him down and gets the round one finish. He's training at AKA now. The thing oh. is that's going to be big for him is where he decides he wants to train. Yeah. Decide who his camp is. And for me, 
probably the best gym in the game at the moment is Team AKA. Possibly, yeah. That's going to keep him grounded and humble. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, the attitude, yeah. You go and train with the. Uh, They'll with throw the, me with one of the old lines. They'll throw yeah. me with a Khabib or a Luke or a Daniel or a Kane and say, "You, you, you're getting too big for your boots, are you?" Right? Let's Islam. Throw in the cage. Islam. Yeah. Oh goodness. So he's definitely in safe hands if he's. Yeah. If that's going to be his home base, then yeah, he's in safe hands. Yeah, definitely. Well, people. That's the preview over and done with. And you might think to do now. Smash the like button, subscribe to my channel, subscribe to Luke's channel, and join us for the watch along. Yes, join us. One. Miami, I'm looking forward to the card. Luke. For a couple of beers. Well, apple juice for me. <laughs> <laughs> but no, Luke, birthday celebration. Always, like, this is my birthday weekend. Yeah, so do you know what? I might I might mix drinks, bro. I might I might even help a little Lucas Aid sport <laughs> or something. <laughs> Get a bit crazy. Now, Luke, as always, i got to thank you, man. Always helping, supporting, and helping grow this channel. Doesn't go unnoticed and fully appreciate you as always, bro. Yeah, made thank you very, very much. Made the two of thousands. The first video we've done since the yes. show hit a thousand subs. Yeah. So. so appreciate Everyone's you. Appreciate supported. everyone who subscribed. And yeah, on the road to 2K now, which sounds weird to say because I've been saying on the road to 1K for such a long time. But yeah, but... We also are on the road to 1K on Luke's channel. So, you know the energy, guys. Please make sure you subscribe. But, yes, people, smash that like button. Subscribe if you're new. Till we see you on the watch along, take it easy, people. See you later.